guys, and welcome back to another Hardcore Iron Man progress video. And we finished off the last episode working on Slayer, but it was recently brought to my attention that it would be very beneficial to get the Arty Cloak 1. Besides just the combat bonuses you get from it, the main perk of it, or at least the one I find the most useful, is that you get unlimited teleports to the Ardoin Monastery. And this teleport is super useful for three reasons. It's right next to an altar so you can recharge your prayer, it's right next to a bush patch which is useful for farming, and it's probably the closest teleport to a fairy ring that we're going to have for a while. I never really thought about getting it before because I thought it had like maybe one teleport per day to the monastery or something. I didn't realize that it's unlimited teleports. That's like super OP considering how low the requirements are. So I really regret not getting it sooner. But if group Iron Man mode comes out and I make one, then that's definitely one of the first things I'm going to be working towards because it is 100% worth it. But now we have the Arty Cloak 1, so it's going to be so much easier getting to Fairy Rings and getting between Slayer tasks faster, and it's just really an all-around good thing to have on the account. I know this is like completely random out of nowhere, but I was doing some stuff on the main account for a bit, and as if King here on the hardcore, so we got a fishing level. Here is level 83 fishing. So we've got 43 herblore, and this is what the herblore tab is currently looking like. And it's kind of embarrassing still using regular attack potions. So we're gonna get at least 45 herblore to make super attacks and go on from there as well to see how many levels we can get with the amount of supplies that we have. If you're ever cleaning herbs, mouse keys are such a blessing to use. I cannot imagine cleaning herbs without mouse keys. So we did manage to get 45 herblore and we have a lot of supplies left over so we're gonna keep going but now we can make super attack potions. I really really like making super attacks because of how easy they are to make. And the secondary is an Eye of Newt, which is super easy to buy in bulk for really cheap from like, you buy from so many different shops, so you don't have to grind anything out for the secondary. So the only thing to really worry about is getting the Eret Leafs, but I've been farming a lot of them, and I don't know if I just got lucky with Slayer Drops or something, but I have a lot of Eret Seeds in the bank, so it seems like they're pretty common to get. And they give 100 XP per Super Attack Potion, which I think is pretty good, so if I keep up the farm runs, then we will be set on Super Attacks for a while. And speaking of farm runs, I've really been trying to kick myself to do more farm runs, because it's like one of those things that you don't want to do, but once you start doing it, it's not so bad, especially once it becomes a habit. And as a hardcore Iron Man, by the way, farming is a very important skill to get certain supplies from, so it's definitely a skill that needs to get up. Alright, the cash stack has been looking pretty light recently, so I thought it would be a good time to do a bit of bank cleaning and alk a bunch of drops from Slayer. So this is what we got, and we are just finishing up now, so we'll see how big the stack is. And that is looking amazing. We have over a 300k stack. That is the most amount of cash we've had on this account yet. But we are back on the Slayer grind now, and we just hit a huge Slayer milestone. 69 tasks. So I was just working on Slayer some more, but I felt like I should get some quests done. And the first one that stood out to me was Temple of Ikov, mainly because it is a requirement for Desert Treasure, and it wasn't that hard of a quest from what I remember. But the only issue is that for Temple of Ikov, you need either a U-Bow, Magic Bow, or Dark Bow, and the requirement to fletch a U Short Bow is 65 fletching. Now, young implings give out U longbows at a very rare drop rate, but I don't think it's worth it to potentially camp at Piro Piro for a very long time when it could just be actually training the skill. So we're starting with level 60 fletching, and we've got about a thousand maple logs banked at the moment, which definitely won't be enough to get to 65. So we're just using up the rest of what we got and then heading over to the woodcutting guild to finish that off. The way I'm doing this is I'm keeping the knife in my inventory and then fletching the logs right away when I get a full inventory and then depositing them into the bank right after cutting them. I've also filled up the bank with placeholders so I don't accidentally deposit the knife because I'm just super efficient like that. Alright, and there we go. There is level 65 fletching. So we are all set to go ahead and make this U bow. And there we go, first U-Bow on this account, so now we are all ready to start Temple of Ikov. And just getting the Boots of Lightness now, because we're here anyways, and it's kind of useless at this point since I have full Graceful, although they do give a lower weight than the Graceful Boots, but the only issue is that you don't get the full set effect of Graceful that way. But this is better to use at the Blast Furnace anyways, uh, whenever I do decide to go back there. This is the infamous bridge where people get lured at, so if someone ever tries to bring you here, don't do it man. Just back out of the lure while you can, it's not worth it. And now we've just got these last couple of bosses to kill for the quest. Easy fights, no issues at all. This is probably one of those quests that people do much earlier on, but I'm just a noob, so we're finally just now getting it done. And that's 10.5k ranging XP and 8k fletching XP, that is pretty decent. And it looks like we got a 
ranging level. Okay, so I'm not actually going to be doing Desert Treasure, but according to the wiki, in order to get Dust Devils as a Slayer task, you need to have started Desert Treasure, but I'm not sure if that means just start the quest, or if I need to get to like a certain point in the quest. And I know the wiki is known for not always being 100% accurate, but we're just going to start the quest, and hopefully we'll get Dust Devils as a task at some point, although I'm not going to count on it. The next thing we are doing is the Tower of Life quest, because it's a super easy quest, and it'll allow us to get a lot of secondaries for Herblore if that's ever necessary. And with Tower of Life complete, we didn't get much in the way of XP, but it was enough to give us a couple construction levels, so now we've got level 20 construction. And now the next quest we're going to be doing, just because we're here, is Hand in the Sand. But we still need to get 49 crafting, and we've got 47. But we've got a lot of supplies banked for crafting, and it'll be more than enough to get those last couple of levels. And we're just going to be cutting all these gems that we had. They were mainly from mining, but a little bit of it was from Slayer as well. Okay, have you guys ever noticed this? I've never really looked at the gems when cutting gems before, but like if you look at my hands, look how small they are. I've always pictured them being bigger, but that does make sense because they're gems. And just cutting this last gem here, and there we have it, level 49 crafting. These two levels took like not even 5 minutes. Cutting gems is such fast XP. But now we've got all the requirements for the hand in the sand quest. So we're gonna knock that out of the way real quick. Yo, okay, so you have to pickpocket from this guy during the quest and you legit get sand from his pocket. You get pocket sand from him. I love King of the Hill, so I really hope this is a reference from it. I'm not sure if this quest came out before the episode, but I'm just gonna tell myself it is a reference because I really want to believe. And we're done with the quest now and um, uh... We, um, we, we got some nice XP rewards from it, and that, that also means we have 150 quest points now, so that's pretty cool. So, every day now, we can collect those 84 buckets of sand to the bank by talking to Bert, so that's another daily that we're probably never going to do. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today's episode, we're just getting a last couple of levels in. But I want to take this time to thank you all so much again for all the support and help to reach 10,000 subscribers. It really means a lot, and I'll never stop saying thank you for however long I keep making videos. I really, really do appreciate it. But let's end today's episode, so thank you all again one last time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you again tomorrow.